What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show, and my name is Mr. Tariq Elite. I am your gracious host, ladies and gentlemen, ready to chop up some good game with you. Today's show is brought to you by... Oh, I'm getting feedback. Hold on. Today's show is brought to you by... The new movie called 7 a.m. That's going to be in theaters June... No, not June, but January 17th. Go to 7 a.m. Movie. Dot com to get up on that game. This movie talks about the importance of creating an economic base for the black community. That's 7ammovie.com. That's going to be in theaters this coming January, ladies and gentlemen. And also, today's show is brought to you by TariqElite.com. That's where you can get all that fresh gear, including the brand new Melanoid Nation t-shirt. So everybody go to TariqElite.com and get those new Melanoid Nation t-shirts, or you can go to Melanoid Nation. Dot org, ladies and gentlemen. So we're doing a, a dual show. We're doing a, a live Ustream radio, and we're doing a live Tariq Elite show at the same time. So a lot of people are checking us out on Ustream. Shout out to the people in the Ustream chat room. The phone number is 818-850-5404. We're doing a live show because we're going to talk about the situation with Eric Garner, the gentleman in New York. Who was killed? Let me put on some. Let me let me change my music up so I can chop it up. Hold on. But Eric Garner, Eric Garner was a gentleman, a black man in New York, in the Staten Island area. He was killed by a chokehold. The police ran up on him and choked him to death on camera. And today, there was an announcement that the cops will not be indicted for that. So a lot of people are up in arms and. We just keep going through this same cycle. And I want people to call in and kind of give your views on it and chime in on that. And again, the phone number is 818-850-5404. Now, don't forget, I'm going to be in Amsterdam next week talking about race. This whole race thing is a global phenomenon. And I'm going to be in Amsterdam next week in Holland talking about race because this is just an international thing. So all my people in Amsterdam, Holland, come check me out. I think I'm doing two lectures out there. Also, my people in Chicago, we're, we're planning on having a, a toy drive around December 20th in Chicago. All of my Chicago brothers and sisters, please hit me up. Let us know about certain community centers that we could use. I know we're going to work with Culture Connection. That's a bookstore out there. We're going to have that as the drop-off spot. But we need a spot to actually have the drive to have people come on down. So if you know of any community centers that we could use, please hit me up at info at TariqElite.com, T-A-R-I-Q-E-L-I-T-E.com, info at TariqElite.com, and, and give me some information on that, please. And let, let's get to some of the phones, because a lot of people are calling in to chime in about the whole Eric Garner situation up in New York. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, this is Travis from uh, Virginia. Um, I wanted to talk about actually the rebuttal for the Eric Garner situation. Um, I was looking up, I've been listening to you for a long time and talking about buying power, and um, I had noticed that Newports, the cigarette Newports, um, they are a $24 billion corporation, and they have 90% of their customers are African Americans. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, so I was saying that if we boycotted that, we could actually destroy them within the next six months or less. And they're planning on selling within uh, the next six months for $24 billion. They employ 2,800 2, people, and less than a quarter of them are African Americans. <clears throat> so um, I started a hashtag called uh, no, more, um, no More Newports. I just wanted to know if I could get your support or... You know, don't support me. Just you know, a hashtag but, no but, more. But Newport, why Newport? So though? But, 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 okay, okay, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. just wouldn't get right. credit for. But why Newport? So why all of a sudden target Newport? Well, here's the thing: is that Newport is the largest corporation that we can single-handedly bring down. Their ninety percent of their money comes from us, and a lot of people get hung up on the Newports. Look, Newports and seats on a bus. It's all black money. And the most powerful thing we did was the Mississippi boycott. Let's just take it national. But but hit Newport. Up Newport wait, but the thing is, boycott Newport just for the sake of just a random company. We're going to boycott a company. There should be something behind it. There should be a real legitimate reason 
behind well, it. Your, your reason is not legitimate enough. I, I, I respect your ambition, but the reasoning is not legitimate enough. My thing is this. If we're going to boycott a company, we should say, how about we boycott people who sponsor Fox News or sponsor any kind of white supremacist who gets on television spewing negativity about black people? We're going to boycott the sponsors who sponsor that show. Something like that would make more sense and, than, and, than to just target I understand, I understand completely, and I'm not, I'm not bickering or arguing or anything. Right. What I was saying was this, is that if, they, if other corporations, because you said, you said one key to white supremacy is one of them will kill you. The rest will just sit back and just shut up. Right, right, right. Everyone's sitting back and just shutting up. We haven't heard nothing from the report that we've been paying them forever. So what I'm saying is, if they see us turn on Newport, that means they know we'll turn on anybody. Okay. Every, that's a wake-up call for everybody. McDonald's, Jordan's, everybody. Okay. Damn, Black folks turned on Newport. Okay. All so right. that's just my, you know, my idea. Okay, but all right, thank you for the call, brother. All right, my, my thing is this. Like I said, if you're going to go after somebody, just don't pick a random place. Like, look, fuck that. We're going after Toys for Tots, nigga. Fuck Toys for Tots. Yeah. Why? Why are you going after Toys for Tots? I don't know, man. Just fuck them. Giving out all them toys and shit. You know what? They give most of their toys to white people. You know, I mean, okay. I mean, they're more legitimate people that you can go after than to just pick a random company. You know what I'm saying? Go after some of these companies when they sponsor these white supremacists on these news networks. That's who you go after. If we're going to use that logic. Let me get a couple of more calls before I give my take on everything. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, this is James from Northwest Georgia. Hey, James, you sound like a Caucasian gentleman. I am, I am, you know, and uh, while I can't feel the frustration of the black experience, I want to tell you that my empathy is with this family and with these tragedies. It just frustrates me to no end. I feel hopeless, like I can't do much about it. But y'all can do something, man. What you can do, man, and you and other brothers and sisters in the white community, y'all can let us know who the white supremacists are who these people on these juries because this is an issue I submit of white supremacy when these people get into these jury rooms the these prosecutors know what type of people to pick who's gonna have certain type of views and it seems like we're just not gonna get a fair shake when we get certain juries that are not of our peers so you need to let us know who these people are you know, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I live in a really, really red area uh, politically, you know, strongly Republican. Right. And, you know, it's funny because my GOP friends are now quoting Martin Luther King. You know, all of this has to be done peaceably, and I understand that, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, violence has solved issues. For example, we'd still be under slavery if there wasn't any violence. Absolutely. You know, we fought a war over that kind of stuff. You know, you, you think about Hitler and World War II. I mean, violence solved that solution. And I'm not telling people to riot or anything else, but I, I think that, you know, it's just frustrating to me because I just don't see it. any solutions. I hear what you're saying, but I'm just so frustrated. And, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. There you go. Hey, man, you said enough, man. Thank you for the call, bro. Thank you. Bye-bye. But, but people, the thing is, a lot of folks were saying because of the Mike Brown situation that we need to let the police or make sure the police have cameras. We just got to make sure all the police wear cameras. And that will help to a certain degree, but that ain't the answer because number one, the cops can turn off the cameras. Also, as we see with the Eric Garner situation, this man was l lynched. What happened to Eric Garner was a lynching. Eric Garner was lynched. That's exactly what a lynching is. You just killed this dude publicly. It was a public lynching and it was legally allowed. It was allowed legally to happen. See, the white supremacy pops off, not just with the cops, but in the courtroom. Because we keep, we, we keep making this a cop issue, but that's why I keep reiterating the phrase white supremacy because it's the people who practice white supremacy in these jury pools and these prosecutors who allow the police officers to get away with this and not just police officers because remember George Zimmerman was not a police officer and the white supremacists in those jury rooms allowed him to get away with killing an unarmed team who was innocent remember with the Michael Dunn case he wasn't a police officer it took two cases two trials to get him convicted for killing Jordan Davis. Remember, they didn't want to convict him for killing Jordan Davis. That was a hung jury. 
hung trial or whatever. The only reason he was convicted of killing or uh, attempted murder for shooting at the other people is that they were alive to defend themselves. See, that's the thing. That's why a lot of these white supremacists are shooting to kill so that you won't be alive to defend yourself. And that's the only reason Michael Dunn got sentenced because some of those teens were alive to defend themselves. And see, the white supremacist will keep trying to deflect into every issue possible. This is a police issue. This is a big government issue. This is a Democrat issue. This is an issue of excessive force. None of that's true, man. The common denominator is white supremacy. And that's something that we are going to have to deal with. At least black people are going to have to deal with it because the white supremacists, they can afford to be in denial about it. But black people, you can't be in denial. Charles Barkley and all those other people who want to tap dance and campaign for that butter biscuit. We can't be in denial about systematic white supremacy and how pervasive it is. And, and the thing about Eric Garner, I've heard some people say, well, God, he shouldn't have been killed for having cigarettes. The thing is, Eric Garner didn't have cigarettes that day, people. Eric Garner did not have cigarettes that day. Let me say it again. That man did not have cigarettes on him when he was murdered like that. That is a complete falsehood. He did not have cigarettes on him. That man was 110% innocent. He was standing there just chilling. He didn't do anything. He wasn't a resisting arrest. Didn't beat up a cop. See, the thing is, everything was on camera, so they couldn't lie. That's why so many people are quiet on social network right now. A lot of people are real quiet, especially the white supremacists. White supremacist Twitter is very quiet right now. Because you can't say, well, he was a thug. No, can't say that. He had his hands up to a certain degree. He was basically surrendering. You can't say he was fighting the cops. None of that stuff. Can't say he was resisting. The man was literally saying, I can't breathe. So you, the white supremacists don't have no excuse this time. So this is why they're very quiet now. Now with some shit went off as far as riots, oh, they'll come out in the woodworks. Oh, you people are savage. Oh, look at you people rioting. Oh, you just wanted to riot anyway. You just use this as an excuse to riot. See, that's the rhetoric we get. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? Come on, man. Y'all can't mess up my flow here. Well, Y'all can't mess up the flow. We got limited time here, ladies and gentlemen. We got limited time. The phone number is 818-850-5404. Somebody said Anthony Camille was saying that Eric Garner was a thug who was arrested many times. That's bullshit. See, there was a guy, there was a white dude out there in Ferguson or in St. Louis who got killed the other night. A lot of folks don't know this. There was a white guy. He was a Bosnian guy. His name is Zamar. I can't think of his name. If, if somebody in the chat room can bring his name up, his name starts with a Z. He was a white gentleman. He ran into some teens, some black teens, and got into like a verbal altercation. He got out of his car, and these teens used a hammer and beat him to death, which is unfortunate. But with that case, they immediately arrested those teens. They found out who they were, and they arrested them. So nobody started going about talking about, was this Bosnian dude on drugs? What was his arrest record? How was he raised? Let's take a look at his school record. Did he get high earlier that day? See, nobody went into all that, that dude's background, looking into his background, trying to come up with reasons to justify why he was killed. They only do that with us. They only do that with black folks. But the thing is, with Eric Garner, they already used an illegal chokehold on him. And there's a reason why the chokehold is illegal, because it kills people. And these cops still did not get indicted for using an illegal chokehold on an innocent man who wasn't doing anything, nor committing a crime. All of this was caught on tape, and they still did not indict the people who did it. And y'all want to tell us that we're not living in a system of white supremacy. I know one news story, I was looking at the news earlier, some people in the news was trying to say, well, it, it was his asthma, 
They're trying to blame the murder and the death on his asthma. See that? No. Yeah, no. See that white white supremacy deflection? Because see, there's medicine for asthma, but there ain't no medicine for a damn chokehold. It was a chokehold that killed that dude. And the thing is, the reality is, we live in a system of white supremacy. Places like Staten Island, which is mostly white and mostly conservative, this is something that we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to to deal with the fact we're not going to, as black people, get a fair trial when it comes to a white person harming us and we have suspected white supremacists as jurors. We're just not going to get a fair trial, especially when they choose from these conservative voting pools. Because you got these people, man, and I'm not trying to make this a conservative or a democratic issue because you got so-called liberal white supremacists out there who is just as racist as everybody else, all right? I don't get caught up in that conservative liberal bullshit. Some of those so-called democratic white supremacists are the worst. But let me tell you, we're just not going to get a fair shake. Do you really think you're going to get a fair shot in a courtroom when you have a bunch of jurors who literally sit up and watch these conservative news shows all day and all these shows do is talk shit about black folks? These people then sat up and listened to Hannity. These people sit up listening to Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly. They sit up listening to negative stereotypical nonsense about black people every single day and then they get into a courtroom and determine the course of your life you're not going to get a fair shake and we need protection from that we just got to keep it all the way 100 and put it out there on the table let's see who's on the phone what's up who's calling what's going on it's Hakeem from Philadelphia hey Hakeem how you doing fam I'm good, you? I'm good. What's on your mind, brother? Well, the main thing on my mind right now is uh, is something that really extends. It, it's going on right now, but it also extends from what happened with the Mike Brown case. And that's that we, when you look at the media, you know, just as something you said earlier, how these liberal stations, um, these so-called liberal stations, a lot of their commentary is really, really circus level. It is. And it they, is. It is. It definitely is. I, to- I agree 100% with that. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I mean, in this day and age, we have um, a lot of different platforms to create our own media. Just like, you know, you have your platform with the podcast and with Ustream and there's people who have like different YouTube channels. Um, But we would also, I think black people also would eventually need to get a major network that could compete head to head with the major networks such as MSNBC and Fox News and CNN, because there's so much surface level sort of analysis and arguments going on. These so-called liberals that, on the surface, are supposed to be on the side of black people who who are who always vote Democrat uh, or vote Democratic, it, you know, they're not really saying anything. They're All they not. do is they ask the same questions over and over again about, you know, they'll find somebody who's in the area of uh, of the case that just was decided on, and they'll say, you know, how is the mood down there? How is every how is everybody feeling in the air tonight? And it's just a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Nobody talks about white supremacy. Exactly. And you notice, Europe. and you notice also with these so-called liberal news channels, when they, when they're yeah. supposed to talk about race, what they'll do, they'll give you five minutes to talk. They'll put one person on there to kind of um, talk about what's going on in the community, and they will put another person on there deliberately who's going to just divert the energy by repeating what about black on black crime and that's going to take up all the little five minutes and basically you get nowhere so those so exactly called, the liberals are just they're just like the conservatives man so I, I don't get caught up in that but anyway thank you for the call man man my man was right on point with that one brother but the thing is a lot of these people what they do as well they will try to make false equivalency arguments too Because a lot of times when we try to talk about white supremacy and how we got to deal with white supremacy, they say, well, no, it's not white supremacy because white people get harmed by cops, too. And then what they do is bring up some minor cases or some one or two cherry pick cases. And right now, the talking point that they're using now, the white supremacists keep bringing up one case, one case of this dude named Dylan Taylor, this white kid who got shot by a cop. First, they tried to lie and say it was a black cop. Then they found out it was a white cop and they're trying to compare that to the Mike Brown situation. Totally different things. 
And also, there's another case of a guy named, I think, Kelly Thomas out here in California where the guy, he was um, he was in the middle of a crime. He was vandalizing property. The cops came and beat the guy, to, they beat him to death. But this guy was in the middle of committing a crime. And the white supremacists really just point to these two cases as their false equivalency. Saying like, oh, there's no white supremacy. It happens to us too. It don't work like that because you have one or two white sacrifices. See, the vast majority of these murders are happening to black people. These legalized lynchings and murders by not just cops, but by civilians are happening to black people. And in any war, there's sacrifices in war. There's casualties in war. You'll get one or two white people who get beat up by the cops in certain situations, but the vast majority does not negate the fact that we're still living in a system of white supremacy. The majority of people that's getting legally killed over and over again are black folks. And this has been a constant for the last 150 years. This ain't even something new. Lynchings of black people has just it's, it's been going on and on and on and on. If you go back li looking at cases from the 1800s to now, just all the time, blacks getting killed publicly and people not being indicted. Blacks getting killed by whites, white supremacists, and, and they're not getting indicted. So that's a problem. We got a problem with white supremacy in this country. And a lot of black people are scared to acknowledge this because you depend on white supremacy. You don't want to go to work and ruffle any feathers. So we got to start calling it what it is. We can't play this little game. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Tariq. Hey, who's this? Hey, Mr. P from the Bay Area. Hey, what's your name again? Mr. P. Mr. P. How you doing, Mr. P? Oh, not bad, Tariq. I got a question for you. You know, I saw somebody, you know, uh, someone commented on Facebook about how, uh, you know, these kind of, you know, the case like Eric Garner or in what happened in Ferguson, like these kind of cases of, you know, uh, blacks being killed by cops and cops getting away with it. This has been going on for a long time, right? Decades, if not, you know, centuries, whatever. Right. Why, why do you think the media spotlight has been uh, so hot? You know, why, why has the media been giving so much attention to the cases, to these recent cases? Is, is it because of social media? What's it's because, it's because the streets, man, they try to ignore it. Trust me, if they could have ignored it, they would have. And remember, with the Ferguson situation, there was a media blackout. When everything went down in Ferguson the first time, they didn't let media go out there. Nobody was broadcasting that for the first few days in Ferguson, all the, the, the riots that were going on out there. They weren't broadcasting that for a minute. So the international press started to come out because of social network and, so, and social media. All these people were putting up vines and tweeting. So social media put the game out there like that. And then the mainstream news media has had to come on board after the fact. So if they could have buried it, they definitely would have. And that's the power of social media. We got to use it correctly. We got to stop bullshitting and gossiping and playing on social media and use that to our advantage because that's the only leg up that we have. We can get the international community on our side. You, you know what I'm saying? To make this stuff known worldwide. So uh, we got to really stop playing around here. But thanks for the call, fam. And another thing, man, black folks, we got to say, hey, man, look, President Obama he has to say something. It, this is just sad that President Barack Obama will just not say something about all of these black people getting legally killed in this country. I mean, this is like over and over and over again. It just keeps happening. And I'm like, this is the last year and this has been happening and we got a president who won't say anything about it. Now that's disgraceful and we need to call him out on that family. That's disgraceful to let that happen and not saying anything about it. Coming out, reprimanding people for rioting, reprimanding people for reacting to these legalized lynchings. That's pathetic. And I know, look, our, our politicians are bought with white money, but they can still be called out. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? What up, it's LP from Chicago, man. LP from Chicago, how you doing, fam? I'm good, bro, how you? I'm good, what's on your mind? Man, first thing I gotta say is, right now, black folks, man, we all we got. Yes, we indeed. can't really, we can't really depend on nobody to have our back. 
and to indict these white officers who just out here killing us, man. Yeah. They're not going to have no transparency in these courtrooms. You know what I'm saying? The jurors, it's not going to be equal. You know what I mean? It's going to always be in balance with more white than black when it comes to us. Exactly. So we just need to focus, get our money right, man, and deal with each other on a financial basis. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Keep it pushing. Absolutely. That's all I can say. Thanks for the call, man. Black folks, it's, it's, you should have been woken up. You should have been awake. Black people should have been awake. Black people are awake. Now it's time for black people to get on board and stop playing around. We need to get our money game together on the MelanoidNation.org website. MelanoidNation.org. We got a, a, a story that has damn near all the black businesses in the country. It was a story we ran a couple of days ago. It has all the black businesses in the country listed. So it has a whole bunch of resources for black businesses Y'all need to be on MillanoidNation.org getting those resources. It's time to start circulating our paper. Again, I was talking about this on Ustream, how I want to get a community down there in Atlanta or in Georgia somewhere and create a, a, a new Black Wall Street. All we need is a city block and get that city block and just make it nothing but Black Millanoid businesses so we can start circulating our money. It doesn't take a lot of money to do this. We need to pool our money together and just get our thing popping. We need a new Black Wall Street or new Black Wall Streets. And also, what we also need to do is look into the Dred Scott decision because the way we're getting killed out here legally, we got to look into the Dred Scott decision. Some of this shit needs to go to the Supreme Court. And the Dred Scott decision basically said that black people do not have rights that a white man is bound to respect. Is that still valid? That's a conversation we need to be having with the news media and the dominant society and legal analysts. That's a decision or, or a conversation we need to be having. And black folks, stop falling for the fake liberal okie doke. Because again, like I said, and like the caller said, some of these so-called liberals are just as racist as the conservatives. They're not trying to deal with white supremacy. As a matter of fact, the liberals and conservatives sometimes work hand in hand. It's the good cop, bad cop. Because what happens is that the conservatives do the hardcore dirty work and the liberals do the, they do the deceptive work. There was a lady arguing with us on Twitter earlier. She was like, hey, Tariq, I'm trying to help. You know, well, this is sad. Because I kept talking about white supremacy on Twitter and the white supremacists were getting mad. And she was saying, well, Tariq, I want to help the kid. Oh, that was so awful what happened. But it's not about race. We shouldn't make it about race, Tariq. It's awful what happened to Eric Garner, but I don't think it's race. I said, well, ma'am, what is it if it ain't white supremacy? I just think it's a police, their abuse of power. I just think it's big government. Uh, ma'am, stop. I had to let her go. I said, ma'am, I don't, if you're not dealing with white supremacy, you're not trying to help. And some of the other people were saying that to her too. And then she went into victim mode. Oh God, you guys are attacking me. I'm trying to help you and you're attacking me. See, watch out for that because then they make it about them. These low, these low key white supremacists are very deceptive. Because they want to get you focused off white supremacy. This is nothing but systematic white supremacy. Nothing more, nothing less. You can call it all of these other things. All roads lead back to white supremacy. Let's see who's calling. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Freak, what's going on? This is Joe in Atlanta. Hey, Joe, how you doing, fam? Good, brother. Good, man. Hey, I'm a uh, Clark Atlanta grad. I actually went to Clark Atlanta and Morehouse. Yes, indeed. And then I'm down here in Atlanta to make good money. And what you're talking about with community, that's what the brothers down here are talking about. Yes, yes. We've been, we've been talking about that for like two years. Dude, Atlanta so, should have been. Let me tell you something. Atlanta would be the perfect spot for that because, number one, a lot of um, well-to-do, I would say working-class black people are already down in Atlanta. Um, also, they have all types of incentives for black people to get businesses down there that people aren't taking advantage of. Also, a lot of those abandoned houses that's near central downtown Atlanta. Just, you, you already know. I'm a, dude. You already. I'm like, why? Because I'm, 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 I'm buying a couple of them right now as Look, we speak. I, <laughs> I, live, dude, I live in Buckhead. Yeah. I'm almost 30 years old. I make six figures. My boys do too. We, we're all pro-black. We're down here. We're down for the cause. We've been talking about that, about six of us. But the thing about it is that we're trying to pull a couple more guys in who aren't 
totally sold. If they're still in the corporate America vibe, it's like, well, I just want to mingle amongst everybody. I don't want to separate. I'm like, dude, we got to. Because I know you know where Arvin Ave is in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. used to be all black. Yeah. They used to be completely black. That, that was, that was kind of uh, how, like, Tulsa, Oklahoma was, you know, up until about 1930. That's where Martin Luther King used to live. Yes, indeed. And with that area over there, it's kind of become white. But if you look in a couple more areas that, that uh, have a lot of potential in Atlanta, man, they're letting go uh, a lot of houses down here for cheap. Easy to set up a community because there's a lot of brothers down here who make over 80, 100, 150, 200 that are under the age of 40. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So setting up a community down here, man, piece of all these black businesses, it would just come uh, come about us um, really just coming together. Actually, the building I live in, man, uh, David Banner's girl lives here. Okay. And right. I've talked it up with her a few times. Like, hey, you know, I seen David in the Hidden Colors thing. I seen him outside. This is my third woo I said, I'm actually trying to uh, connect with her to get David to speak his spellmate. Okay. Um, and just trying, and just to really get us to come together because what, what we really need is, is, is my thing, I'm not a, a total separatist on, um, on, so much, but what, I want to have something where I can feel like how, how white folks have their buckets. I want my own shit like that. Well, exactly, but we're already separated, so that's the thing. Black people get so afraid of being called a separatist. We're already separated. Ain't nobody getting shot in the streets like us. We're already separated, so we might as well you, circulate Thank our you. money. Fuck all that scared to, to offend people. We're getting shot out here. Our kids are getting shot, so we need to get yeah, our you're money right, straight. You're right about that, yes, man. Indeed. You're 100 percent right, and I'm, I'm gonna end it on this. Because I know you're busy doing the show, but my biggest concern, I talked to uh, one thing that really pisses me off. I hear people say this, well, it's not a black issue, it's not a black issue. Show me anywhere in this country or anywhere in the world where there are black police officers gunning down white people. Absolutely. Show me that. Show me that. I was in Chastain Park in Buckhead the other day, one of the wealthiest areas in Atlanta. And I'm thinking to myself, I could only imagine if they had an all-black police force talking to them the way an all-white police force does to us in different parts of the country. Yes, indeed. So, I mean, but Atlanta, man, I, I, when I heard you say that, I had to call the show because mm -hmm. Atlanta will be the perfect spot, man. Yes. I went to go see Hidden Colors when you launched it at the theater here, man. It was packed. It was sold out. Brothers were showing love. It no was doubt. it was the, one of the most powerful experiences I've had in my young adult life. There you go. But if you're trying to get something happen, man, um, I got I got Dave's gr uh, girl's number. Oh, I got man. a bunch of professional I, dudes I roll with down email here, me, man. man. Email me, brother. E email me, brother. Okay, okay. I had to let the brother go. I got limited time here. This brother's going on and on. And also, man, you, you, you're kind of dry snitching on David's lady. You don't know the kind of situation David had. David might have a couple of breezies down there. And you put one of them out there, so. Uh, let me. Uh, that's why I had to cut him off. I'm like, hold on now. <laughs> now uh, David might be juggling a couple of them. See, you you, you broke a player rule, bro. You're like, yeah, David Banner girl living in my building. And what if David got another chick somewhere? Like, what? I ain't never talked to no nigga from Spelman. I ain't never talked to no nigga from Morehouse. So yeah, I ain't want my man to put David Banner's people out there. Like he was kind of he was max snitching a little bit, man. I, I didn't like that. You know. <laughs> My man could have kept that on the low. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but I digress, ladies and gentlemen, man. But also, man, I was talking to some people on... Um, some people were hitting me up on um, Twitter talking about this whole situation. They were like, oh, Tariq, this is not about white supremacy. No, it's not. It's not about white supremacy. The white supremacists are just a small fringe group in the South. I've had people hit me up saying that today. All white supremacists are just, they're just a small group of hillbillies. That ain't what a white supremacist is. The white supremacists will try to get you to think that's what a white supremacist is. That ain't, let me tell y'all something. The white supremacists, the Klan and the skinheads, that's, that's a minute part of what, those are white extremists. A white supremacist is any person in the dominant society who believes that they should get benefits and privileges and that they are superior based on their race over black people. So the white supremacists, they ain't running around in clan suits, that cartoonish image of a white supremacist. The white supremacist is that little old nice lady that you see at the grocery store every day who smiles in your face and goes um, home and, and watches Fox News all day and has negative views about black folks. 
The white supremacist is the school teacher who's smiling in your face every time you see her, but she's funneling all the black kids into special education and trying to justify it by saying, well, they're just not smart enough. Anybody who thinks that they're superior or they should be superior or they should be privileged over black people, that's what a white supremacist is by definition. It's not no cartoonish, caricaturish clan member or somebody walking around with a Confederate flag. Those, those are white extremists. So don't let nobody confuse you as to what a white supremacist is. Those people on the Eric Garner jury who let those cops go, those are white supremacists. If you can see this dude get beat down on, on, on video, not beat down, but killed, and agree with that and say, ah, no charges, that's white supremacy. That goes back to the whole Rodney King situation. Because what they did, these prosecutors and these people, they know how to nullify these juries out here. They had a video of Rodney King out here getting beat down and people we, we've been talking about police violence in LA for the longest before Rodney King they were beating our asses out here worse than that they were tearing our asses up out here those cops were beating the brakes off black folks out here so when the Rodney King thing popped off we were like well damn there you go now nah, we ain't lying and you see what goes on the white supremacists move the case way out to a place called Simi Valley, which is not too far from where I live. Simi Valley is mostly conservative, and that's what they do. They move it to a conservative part of town. They, they find juries in conservative parts of town. And even back then, these people had these negative views of black people. They saw the tape. They saw those white cops. They saw themselves in those white cops. They're like, well, hell, Rodney King deserved that ass whooping. Then all hell broke loose. But that's nothing new. This thing goes on and on and on again. We keep going into this vicious cycle, this vicious circle. What's up? Who's calling? Hi. Hi, this is Kim. Hey, Kim, where are you calling from? I'm calling from North Carolina, but I'm originally from New York. There you go. What's on your mind, Kim? Is this Tyree? No, Kim. This is not Tyree. <laughs> this Charles Barkley. And you terrible. No, better not be. You terrible. <laughs> you terrible. All right, go ahead. This is Tariq. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I am so excited. Let me tell you, I bought your shirts and I walk around with it all the time in the South. And I'm like, please don't let these white people beat me down. <laughs> I watch the hidden colors with my, my children. And coming from New York, the police are very nasty and they're very brutal. Yeah. My husband... He has been abused by New York City police so much, and they be high, and they just coming up to you. And I'm like, are they drug testing these officers? And I don't think so, because they'll be high, and you'll see them smoking weed. You'll see them just coming to you very aggressive, and it's very scary. And I think we need to inform black people more that you, you got to chill when it comes to these cops, because... They out to really kill us, like they really are. Yeah, even if you do chill, hell, Eric Garner was chilling. I mean, he was saying, "Hell, I can't breathe, I can't breathe." So yeah, they out to get us, but we got to come up with a solution, and we got to come up with a way to protect ourselves. That's why black folks, we got to get serious about getting our economic game up. There's no way around that. But thank you for the call, sister. Yes, indeed. And you know, my thing is this, because a lot of people are copping, please. A lot of suspected white supremacists were hitting me up on Twitter like, Tariq, you're making it seem like all of us are white supremacists. I'm like, whoa, I didn't say that. That's why I specify white supremacists because I know all white people are not racist. I'm not, I don't go that route. All white people are not racist at all. But we do have white supremacists out here and white supremacy is the domineering system. So to try to minimize white supremacy by talking about it's a bunch of hillbillies, bullshit. We live in a system of white supremacy and so-called non-white supremacists are not letting us know who the white supremacists are. And if you are in denial of white supremacy, you're complicit with white supremacy, which makes you a white supremacist to a certain degree. See, people think just because you're not out there burning flags or burning crosses and beating up black folks that you're not a white supremacist. 
But if you let that go on and you know it goes on and you choose to ignore that, that makes you a white supremacist too. Because you can do something about it. Let me say this. When Mike Vick got caught or accused of fighting dogs, all people did something about it. They didn't say, oh, that's just unfortunate. Oh, that's sad. Oh, that's just bad luck. No, people got up and made something happen. No, they demanded that he was prosecuted for killing them damn dogs or fighting them dogs. And it wasn't even him doing it. They demanded that Michael Vick was prosecuted for fighting them dogs. So the white supremacists know how to get out here and make stuff done or get stuff done. They know how to make it happen. And another thing when people do all that whining about, oh, it's not us, it's not us, it's not all of us. See, the thing is, certain people in the dominant society, they want the privileges that white supremacy provides, but they don't want the negative stigma of white supremacy. Let me say that again so y'all can feel me. A lot of these people out here, you want the privileges that white supremacy affords you, but you do not want the negative stigma of white supremacy, and you can't have it both ways. Because the lady was arguing with me, well, I don't. I, what white privileges do I get? I said, ma'am, you get the privilege of not getting choked out on camera legally. That's a privilege. You get a privilege of allowing your kids to go out and play without getting shot and then labeled thugs for getting shot. That's a privilege. You have the privilege of not having military weapons aimed at you like they do with black people every 20 years. Every 20 years, they're aiming military weapons at black folks in their own country. And we're supposed to be citizens. They do not do that to white citizens. They do not aim military weapons and have the National Guard and all that come out to white citizens at all. Even when white citizens aim guns at the law enforcement officials, just like they did up there with Clive and Bundy in Nevada. These dudes went out there and had their guns and ammo ready for cops and they didn't bring the National Guard out on those dudes. They only do that with us. So that's a privilege to not have that happen to you. So people, let's get off that ain't no white privilege bullshit. We live in a system of white supremacy. Black folks, what do we do? Black folks got to protect themselves. See, we can't go around trying to figure out who the white supremacists are because that's the little trick they have. That's why I use the term suspected white supremacists. See, we can't go around trying to figure out who's the white supremacists. That's why in the 1960s, when black people were being discriminated against, the federal government had to go in and protect those children going to schools. When black kids wanted to go to the newly integrated schools, you had white supremacists out there throwing bricks and spitting on those kids. So black people couldn't go in those neighborhoods and find out who the nice white people were. Black people had to be protected from any suspected white supremacists. That's why they had the federal troops come down there to protect them. Black folks need federal protection at this point. We need federal protection, and if we don't get federal protection, we need to be in the process of getting our economic base together. And this is another thing. Why, this is why they set up black people to get felonies so they can't serve on juries. See, the white supremacists, they're chess players. They think 20 moves ahead. They come up with ways to keep black people off these juries, and getting black people criminalized early will keep a lot of black people off these juries. So the white supremacists out here playing chess while black folks out here playing. So we need a lot of stuff done. Let me get one more call here, because we don't have a lot of time. Y'all got to be, be quick with it. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Tariq. Uh, it's Melissa calling from Virginia. Hey, how you doing, uh, love? I'm, I'm all right. I just wanted to uh, speak on something because uh, I had somebody uh, trying to debate with me on Twitter about, uh, you know, what's going on in Ferguson as far as the looting and rioting and all that stuff. And then I had to take a step back and think about, well, what about when they burned down the churches in Alabama and burning crosses in front of people, churches and stuff like that? And I'm and they call us animals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's so hypocr it's, it's hypocritical, man. It's very hypocritical. Very, yeah, yeah. Very. Thank, thank you for the call up. But that's why, man, it's time for us to get our economic base together, man. We just got to get our money circulated. We got to, like we, we're talking about getting businesses started, 
getting business communities started and we just gotta we are all we have we should not be in a situation of economic deprivation look I know that the white supremacists they've done things to keep resources away we gotta understand what they're doing and hustle around that we gotta hustle around that we gotta stop playing around it's too much wealth and resources for us to not get out here and get it. We just got to circulate it among ourselves and stop listening to the white supremacists. The white supremacists are there to deceive you. And while we're getting our economic base together, the president still needs to say something. We still need federal protection. The UN, they keep talking about they're doing these investigations. I mean, damn, what are you coming up with? How many more killings of black folks do you need to see these legalized lynchings? United Nations. I mean, because this has violated all types of genocide treaties. I mean, what's the purpose of having a genocide treaty? This is ethnic cleansing when one race of people, they keep getting legally killed over and over again. And then when we try to talk about it in a public arena, we get the what about black on black crime deflection, which is nothing more than a deflection. But anyway, guys, we got to get it together, man. That's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I'll holler at you guys Sunday on Ustream. Peace.